Good evening from New York. If you wondered why President Obama would inflate somebody as ultimately peripheral to the actual dynamics of American politics as Rush Limbaugh by referencing him personally, tonight you may have gotten your answer because in our fifth story, if a president is people single out a radio announcer as the de facto head of the opposition party, the actual politicians, the actual heads of that opposition party might conceivably rise up in defense of their territory and denounce the announcer and it all ends with somebody meekishly apologizing to another. This they now do. First Governor Sanford of South Carolina, then Chairman Steele of the RNC, and now comedian Limbaugh, ambassador from Egoland. CPAC, last week's conservative political action conference, the gift that still keeps on giving. On Saturday, keynote speaker Limbaugh issuing his self-described first national address before an adoring crowd in Washington, calling on right-wing conservatives to take back the country and defending his remark about wanting President Obama to fail. Limbaugh comparing that, his desire to see the president fail during the nation's economic equivalent of 9-11, as nothing more than cheering for the Steelers over the Cardinals in this year's Super Bowl. RNC Chairman Steele, among those Republicans, distancing themselves from Limbaugh's remarks, still also chafing at the suggestion that a comedian, other than him that is, is now leading the Republican Party. Yeah. You have your view, I have mine. We don't need incendiary rhetoric. Exactly. Like, like, like Rush Limbaugh, who is the de facto leader of the Republican Party. He's no, it's like, not. Well, I'll tell you what. I've never I'm the heard de facto anybody... leader of the Republican Party. Then you know what? <laughs> then, then I can appreciate that. But no, no one will, ride, will, will actually uh, uh, cry down some of the things he says. Like when he comes out and says that he wants the president to fail. I understand he wants liberalism to fail. Like yeah. I, I get that it's not about the yeah. man. But it is still about the idea that he would rather have an idea fail so his idea idea could move to the forefront but, but, and have but a succeed Dio, a minute, that Dio, to me is destructive. How is that any different than what was said about George Bush during his presidency? You're absolutely, let me, I mean, let me so, tell you so, absolutely so let's put right, it in the context here. Let's put it in the context here. Rush Limbaugh is an entertainer. Rush Limbaugh, his, his, his whole thing is entertaining. Yes, it's Republican incendiary. Party, right. Yes, yeah, it's, it's ugly. Limbaugh saving his response for his radio program this afternoon, ranting for 20 minutes, alleging that Chairman Steele cares more about being a pundit than about running the party. Michael Steele, you are head of the RNC. You are not head of the Republican Party. Tens of millions of conservatives and Republicans have nothing to do with the RNC, and right now they want nothing to do with it, and when you call them, asking them for money, they hang up on you. It's time, Mr. Steele, for you to go behind the scenes and start doing the work that you were elected to do instead of trying to be some talking head media star, which you're having tough time pulling off. But it seems to me that it's Michael Steele who is off to a shaky start. Mr. Limbaugh also contending that because when Steele was a Senate candidate, Limbaugh made the unfortunate decision to equate Parkinson sufferer Michael J. Fox to Daffy Duck after Fox had endorsed Steele's challenger, Senator Ben Cardin. Mr. Steele now owes him his everlasting and unquestioning loyalty. Exactly the kind of logic that today had the comedian defending his Obama failure stance in terms of you're either with the Limbaugh or against the entire Republican Party. If it's your position that you want President Obama and Speaker Pelosi and Senate Leader Harry Reid to succeed with their massive spending and taxing and nationalization plans, I think you have some explaining to do. Why are you running the Republican Party? Why do you claim you lead the Republican Party when you seem obsessed with seeing to it that President Obama succeeds? The denouement tonight, Mr. Steele's office says the chairman reached out to talk to Limbaugh, but nobody's saying whether or not he succeeded. Steele saying he wants Limbaugh to know he meant no offense, that he went back at that tape and realized words that I said weren't what I was thinking. I'm not going to engage these guys and sit back and provide them the popcorn for a fight between me and Rush Limbaugh. As my old friend, the late great Chick Hearn used to say, he's already in the popcorn machine with butter and salt all over him. Time now to call in our own political analyst, Richard Wolf. Good evening, Richard. Good evening, Keith. Did the president just play the GOP into this? Did he just cause its chairman and its loudest mouth to rip each other, or is that too Machiavellian to be possible? Uh, Machiavelli was foreign, wasn't he? <laughs> um, look, he, this is not too Machiavellian. In fact, what's surprising is how well and how quickly it's worked. It's a playbook that is incredibly familiar. If you cast your mind back ooh, all the way back to the Bush era, 
you'd find Republicans doing the same thing to Democrats. They try to define them as move on or daily coast or, or as Rush Limbaugh was just trying to do, uh, as Pelosi and Reid. Uh, the problem is you've got to pick a face that is pretty unacceptable and, and Rush Limbaugh has, uh, has, has a striking face which is totally unacceptable to independent voters. The people who put President Obama over the top in Indiana and North Carolina, they find him to be a turnoff, and if you can define the Republican Party as Rush Limbaugh, then you're really laying the groundwork for this uh, ongoing civil war for the next couple of years. But the last 60 years of American political civil war is littered with politicians who went after the media or specific people in the media, as you suggest. Uh, Joe McCarthy versus Edward R. Murrow, Richard Nixon versus Dan Rather, Spiro Agnew versus everybody. But each of those, each one of those was a frontal attack. Is th This is something different, isn't it? A divide and conquer thing. You go after the vanities of everybody on one side of the political spectrum in hopes of getting them to do the attacking for you? There's a brilliance to this that I don't know that we've seen before. Well, it's divide and conquer, and there's certainly enough vanity to go around here. But Rush Limbaugh isn't just a member of the media. He is a political force and has been used as such. He's one of the four walls of the Republican echo chamber. Uh, uh, he may even be two, you know, he's that big. Uh, and the, the problem here for the Republicans is that if it was just a member of the media, there would be no conflict. It would be easy to throw him over the board. Oh, oh that's an image I wish I hadn't risen. Mm -hmm. uh, but what you have here is, is someone who is a very effective channel for mobilizing the base. Uh, so it's incredibly difficult to go out and attack him. But apology or not, uh, Steele just cut Limbaugh. Eric Cantor just cut Limbaugh, and that's two years ago that Cantor sent out this fundraising letter that said, I stand with Rush. He even created a website called that. It, could it be dawning on Limbaugh here that possibly Republican politicians have been, you know, using him as opposed to actually worshipping him? I suspect it's dawning on Limbaugh that his audience is more loyal to him than than Cantor's is to himself. And so, uh, look, his numbers, I expect, are going to go through the roof after all of this. He's been attacked by the Obama White House. There is a marketplace out there for people who hate this president, and he's trying to corner it. The question for Republicans is, where does it leave their debate about their identity and their values and what they stand for? Does the Limbaugh agenda uh, have any resonance anymore? Do they have to not just dis disassociate themselves from him, but everything he talks about? That's the difficult challenge, and that's where the sort of brilliance of this strategy comes into play. It's not about Limbaugh. It's what do the Republican politicians have to do? MSNBC political analyst Richard Wolf. Uh, it's, it's fascinating, as always, sir. Great, thanks.